Welcome back, everybody. I'm Ed Berliner. Our extended coverage here on Newsmax, the results of the 2016 New Hampshire primary. Let's go ahead and get back to work. Welcoming in Brent Podowski, Matt Towery, who joined us uh, before the break. So we're going to bring him back right now because we've got a lot more to talk about here. Gentlemen, let's talk about some real hard statistics here that tell us all we need to know about New Hampshire. And we really haven't mentioned this a lot. Just because, and again, no insult to the Donald Trump people, the Bernie Sanders people, anybody. But just because you win New Hampshire does not mean that you are going to be President of the United States. Since 1952, five Democratic and five Republican winners have gone on to become the leader of the United States. Left, JFK, LBJ, Carter, Clinton, Barack Obama, Wright, Dwight Eisenhower, Nixon, Reagan, George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush. All right, Brent, I come to you first on this one here. What's to make us believe that this year Bernie Sanders breaks it on the left and actually becomes number six? Oh, I don't I don't expect that, to be honest. I think it's possible. I think he's got a tremendous uh, wind behind him now. Uh, but I think Hillary will come back if she learns the right lessons, and I think she will. What are those lessons, uh, Brent? Let's happened... stop right there, because you, you said that earlier, and I wanted to make sure we talked about that. Because she's come oh, yeah. out and said we have to recreate everything right now. I mean, I've got a list in front of me right now of things that Hillary Clinton says she's now going to start talking about from here on out. It's as long as my arm at this point. So what's the lessons that she learned? Well, number one, I, I wrote a, a column in The Observer uh, early this week just shredding this concept uh, as I called it, the Clinton campaign was declaring a war against women who support Bernie. I thought that was a horrendous blunder. I told the Clinton people privately, four days privately, and then I went public with it in a column. So number one, you don't play women against women. That was a horrendous mistake. You don't ask younger women or any women to support a candidate only because she's a woman. And Point what two, was the reaction was of the Clinton campaign, Brent? Um, Next, uh, some agreed with me and some didn't. OK, and we'll find out in the end who prevailed when we see how they react to what I considered an inevitable uh, New Hampshire problem, that the strategy backfired. It was doomed to backfire. I thought it, attacking Bernie uh, was, was a big mistake, a big blunder, questioning Bernie's integrity. He happens to be the most authentic and honest candidate. Uh, and, and to say the opposite simply isn't true or credible. And it's going to alienate a lot of his supporters and a lot of people who don't trust Hillary to begin with. She needs to talk about her vision, her dream, her goals for America. She needs to talk about what she can do. She does have a vast wealth of experience. She does have a lot to offer. She didn't say a darn thing about it in the last week of the New Hampshire primary. And that was a big, big mistake. But Brent, how so is she, she going to fight against us? I get all this and you're exactly right. But people don't like her. They hate her. They despise her. If you even look at people in their own party, in your own party on the Democratic side, they just don't trust her worth a damn. So how does she get past that? Well, number one, she has to speak positively and, and not negatively. And that, that was her mistake, speaking negatively. Her opportunity is to speak positively about what she dreams of that will serve the interests of people. I'll tell you this, though. It's not just Hillary who isn't liked. The entire Republican and Democratic establishment is disliked. The corporate media is disapproved by more than 75 percent of Americans. Wall Street is disapproved. Every institution Every establishment in American public life is disapproved, and the numbers prove this. Uh, there is a revolt in both parties, among independents and from the American people, about establishments of all kinds that the people believe correctly are corrupting the country, even if they believe it in different ways and for different reasons. So it's not just Hillary. Uh, she, and, and by the way, when she runs as the candidate of the Democratic National Committee fixing the debates by trying to have debates timed so few Democrats or Americans would hear them, that is exactly what enrages the American people. But it's not just Hillary. It's a Democratic, Republican, Wall Street, and media establishments right. and institutions. You're, and they all got slaughtered today. You're in exactly both right. But here's something else. Matt, let me come to you. And I, and I want to get down to that number six question here, too, that we left behind a couple of minutes ago when it comes down to New Hampshire. But what Brent said is exactly right. People hate the government. They hate establishment. They can't stand Washington, D.C. They want to put a nuke inside the beltway, set it off, and walk away and let everybody perish. They wouldn't care, most of the people in America right now. Here you've got Donald Trump on one side, who is the guy saying everything right against Washington. Now, you've got Kasich, Bush, Rubio, Cruz, everybody else on this side who is seen as establishment. So here it is, Matt. If you've got all those people sitting here and you want to beat Donald Trump, 
knowing full well that they hate your guts, what do they do now to get people back on their side and make them say, come on, we may be establishment, but we're still the ones you really need? Well, well first of all, there would have to be a coalescing behind one candidate fairly quickly, like in the next few days. Uh, that's not going to happen uh, for the reasons that we talked about earlier. Uh, Bush has a lot of money. He, he did all right. He's going to be able to go in South Carolina. He's got some organization. Uh, Kasich is going to feel like he's floating on air because he's come in a, a solid number, well, not solid, but number two. And of course, Cruz is going to be in there as well. So there's no, there's no way to get the establishment to consolidate the way it normally does. So I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I, I would go to uh, Brett's comment just a few minutes ago, though, and, and say that not only do I agree, agree with, with his comments and what he's, what he's talking about, but I also would ask this question. I'm going to bounce this back to you. I don't usually do this. Uh, it seems to me that in the Democratic uh, primary, which I also poll, and in 2008, Barack Obama was trailing Hillary Clinton terribly in South Carolina until late 2007 when uh, one Oprah Winfrey went to William Bryce Stadium in South Carolina and filled the entire stadium up and basically said, this is my candidate. And suddenly the entire African-American vote flipped on Hillary Clinton. And that was the beginning of the end for her because if you recall in 2008, Clinton was not able to count the Florida delegates. Florida moved forward, they weren't able to be counted and that really destroyed her candidacy. So what I'm asking is, why is it that Bernie Sanders is not considering some sort of putative vice presidential nominee, someone that he says, I'm running with this person? whether it might be Deval Patrick, I don't know that he'd be inclined to do it, or someone who he could then bring to the table in South Carolina. And I say that also with regard to uh, the Republican race. I'm going to be very surprised if Donald Trump doesn't reach out to, for example, Dr. Ben Carson fairly quickly. Okay. I, I know that okay. there's a it's discussion. A, it's a good yeah, question. Right. Let Brent go ahead and get to it. Brent? Yeah. Yeah, I've actually suggested publicly in a column that if I were Bernie, far be it from me, uh, I'd announce he's running <laughs> with Elizabeth Warren. I think that's the person he ought to run with. You get a woman, you get a populist, uh, and, and you get the kind of argument that I think progressives can make and win on. Uh, the one area I disagree with just about everybody on is uh, on both sides, both parties. This nomination fight in both parties will go on much longer than people think. Every time you turn on TV, so-and-so must win this and must win that. On the Republican side, what's going to happen, sooner or later there will be a coalescence around some candidate other than Trump or Cruz. Now, uh, what Rubio's gaffe in the debate did is it could have been him by today. We could be talking about that right now, but we aren't. Now, whether it's Kasich, who I view, by the way, as a Jack Kemp kind of Republican. I mean, I'm a liberal Democrat, but I knew Jack Kemp. Uh, and I worked with him when I worked for Democratic leaders. He's a good man. I think Rubio can play that role. And I think somebody will, will evolve into that role and be a finalist sometime uh, between uh, Super Tuesday and a month after that. And it, it's not, nothing is a must win until we know who that candidate is. It was delayed by New Hampshire. The fact that they all got bunched in that, that uh, Plan C that's not Trump and that's not uh, Cruz uh, delays the coalescence, which is probably bad for Republicans, but it will happen. There will be a grand fight between one of those who will survive versus Trump and Cruz, the winner of that grand fight that I think will be one to two months from now will probably be the nominee, and it could be any one of them. All right, now, well, Matt, I gotta come back to you for a moment here, yeah, because yeah. Brent gave you an answer there, and with all due respect, you didn't answer my question. You kind of dodged it a little bit here, and you're the expert, so I wanna make sure that you, you dig into this question for me here. The establishment candidates are there. They are fighting against Donald Trump. Is it even possible at this point how then do they do it to bring people back and say, you need us, you want us, we're better than this guy? Well, here, here's the problem with that math. It, it, by the way, that, that determining factor for the Republican side is going to be the state of Florida because it's being held after all of these other Southern primaries, which are all proportional. It's winner take all. So at that point in time, the money's going to run out and someone's got to be the one person who is the establishment candidate. But even if you have that, think of this, Ted Cruz is not going away. Florida is probably his worst nightmare because there are, aren't a lot of evangelicals in Florida. So I, I think you're going to have your, your, your crescendo. You're going to really see this thing start to gel. When we get to March 15th and Florida's a winner-take-all state and usually a microcosm of the nation and usually a Republican who wins Florida gets the nomination. So I think you're going to get this resolved before you get to May. Now it may drag out, 
But in the end, you're going to get that answer sooner. But what, but what as, is that? What is that? I hate to do this, but what is that yeah. answer? Do do these establishment Republicans stop becoming so establishment? Do they have to become? No, do they no, have to become no. Trumpified? They can't do it this year because here's right. the problem: if, if if one of them begins to rise, that means someone's got to be dropping. It's either Trump or Cruz. The Trump and the Cruz vote unify together. They're never going to go to the other side. This is just not an establishment year. I just don't see it happening. I think, I think either Cruz or Trump gets the nomination. So it's at this point, then, we can actually say, and this brings us right back to what I said at the beginning, only five candidates, five Republicans and five Democrats have ever been, have ever become president after winning New Hampshire. You then strongly believe that right now we're looking at number six. Well, let's put it this way. None of them have won without winning Iowa or New Hampshire. So, and I just said Cruz or Trump. Right. So that's pretty much it. We're going to rely on that sort of history, which can easily be bucked. Uh, you know, Newt won South Carolina. Everybody said, everybody said, oh, well, nobody ever gets the nomination without winning South Carolina. Well, Newt did. He, he fell out. So history doesn't always repeat itself. But if we're using that history, Iowa or New Hampshire, one of those two goes on to win the nomination. So that would tell you Trump or Cruz. All right. Brent, when we hit South Carolina here, is it not just possible to say, and I love setting up these kind of scenarios here. I mean, Hillary Clinton suffered a crushing defeat tonight. This was predicted. Everybody knew it was coming. She comes to South Carolina right now. Mrs. Clinton comes up, goes right up, hits South Carolina, gets the votes, comes right up, beats Bernie Sanders bad. Doesn't that pretty much negate everything that happened in North Carolina if it does happen? Or happened well, in New Hampshire, if, if, I should if, say. Yeah, that does negate it, and they will battle on from there. Uh, I think Matt may be right that Florida is, is the decider. That is certainly possible. I think this thing will be decided uh, probably in April or early May, looking at the calendar. Uh, I do not agree necessarily that the number six rule holds. Uh, I think this election is going to violate all the rules. I mean, who would have thought that the Republicans would be on the brink of nominating a guy uh, who uh, uh, makes fun of disabled people, talks about Hispanics as rapists and murderers, okay, uh, takes positions that, that the National Review considers liberal democratic in many cases, correctly, I would add, and who ever thought that the winner of the New Hampshire primary would be a 74-year-old guy who calls himself a socialist, whether <laughs> he really is or not. I, I think all the rules throw him out the window this year. We are in new terrain. There is a revolution against the establishment, and nobody knows how it's going to turn out. And I think it's going to be a fun campaign to cover. I'm glad I'm not running for office or working for these guys. So, Matt, then, <laughs> would you agree as many? And I'm, I'm seeing it now on social media tonight. It's actually burning things up a little bit on the Twitter feeds, where people are talking about right now, this moment, we are seeing a sea change in American politics. There is absolutely no going back after this. Whether you love him, hate him, despise him, want to kiss him, Donald Trump is the one who is driving America into a different form of politics. You agree? Uh, I do believe that. And because the polling was showing this, I wrote a column in December of 2014 saying Trump would be the leading candidate for the GOP nomination, and people thought I was nuts. But at the time, the polling was already telling me that there was a major revolution against these institutions that, that Brett talked about. And I, that's why I think Trump is probably going to go on and take this thing. If he doesn't, it's going to be Ted Cruz. I just don't see this as a, as a normal year. And I think that between the two, Trump is more view, viewed to be the populist candidate, which is what seems to be also working, I might add, on the Democratic side when you look at Bernie. And I'm not writing off the possibility that Bernie could get that nomination. I think this could, some things could happen that could really make that an interesting Democratic race as well, which I originally did not think to be the case. We're not going to write off anything. Are you kidding? Gentlemen, we got a long <laughs> way to go here. This is just two states. I've said this all night long. we still got more entertainment to come. Uh, Brent Podowski, I want you to stick around because you're going to come back after the break. Matt Towery, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for your perspective. And I hope we continue this because this sort of a, a, very, a very interesting, serious discussion is going to carry us right into November. All right, a couple of things that we just need to do as far as house cleaning is concerned here right now. If you have not heard it, if you are just joining us, Chris Christie has already said that he is going back to New Jersey. The Wall Street Journal indicates that he is going to make a decision on his campaign tomorrow, very likely after a single-digit performance tonight in New Hampshire. It is the end for Chris Christie. Carly Fiorina, by the way, says that she will continue even though she finished farther down the list. So we are beginning to see that change and people start to leave. The question now remains, does Jeb Bush have enough and enough money to continue forward? That's something we need to talk about. We'll continue right here on Newsmax. Uh, Newsmax, our special coverage of the 2016 New Hampshire primary continues.